All right. So, uh, sorry. Um, as you can see from my um, from the diagram here, you can have you can see that the codes are being shipped into a repository. So, you, some of the repositories that are being used for um, uh, for versioning could be you could use Git, you could use G, um, Jira, and you could also use um, Azure DevOps or VS as it was formerly called. Now, with the um, one of the advantages of uh, DevOps as well is maintainability. You have effortless process of recovery in the event of a new release crashing or disabling the current system. Now, with the with with the uh, with the with the availability of um, versioning, and also with the availability of um, of, of DevOps, you have you are able to store your codes in a central repository, which can easily be recovered. Should you know, should you have crashes or should you have failures when the products when the product is in in, in use or or during maintenance? Yeah. Now, um, due to the collaboration and effective working of both the development team and the operation team, now. You are able to ship your product to the market on time. You are able to develop your products faster. You are able to um, develop, um, and, you're, and also you are able to release your products in in, in silos. You know, at in in, you can, in in different. For instance, you can you, you can have one, two, three, four releases. So as a result of as a result of um, the collaboration between the two teams, the operational team and the development team, you are able to get things faster to your supplier, to your to your consumers, or to your customers. Yeah. And then another thing, another good quality of um, another reason why DevOps is used is because of greater quality. Now DevOps helps the team to provide improved quality of application developments as it incorporates infrastructural issues. Uh, you have Reduced risk. Now, uh, it's incorporated security aspects in the software delivery life cycle. This helps in reduction of defects across the um, life cycle. So, as you are, as as a developer is writing his or her codes, uh, a tester is doing a test on them. You are able to um, uh, you are able to if, if you are able to declare or detect bugs on time. And as you are able to detect bugs, you know this is being able you um, the, you, are, you are able to um, um, Overcome this challenge. You're able to um, rectify the bugs. You're able to um, so that as you're doing this here, because you are working, you are working in sync, and these are done. Things are being done simultaneously, and as a result of that, the, you, you have a good chance. There's a good chance of pro um, uh, of, of producing goods and um, products that have that, that 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 have been properly um, tested and are. And have reduced risk, so you are reducing the chance of your products crashing or going into um, or, or being deployed, and then you're having issues there. And then there's also resiliency. Resiliency. The operational state of the software system is more stable, secure, and changes are auditable. So through your um, configuration management and your tree of um, versioning um, system, you have good and stable products, which you know, which can be easily which are easily maintainable and um, and and all that, yeah. And also, as a result of the collaboration between the development and the operational team, you have a good chance of um, saving money as well. And then um, the last one, but not the least one, sorry, is the uh, breaks larger code bases base into small pieces. DevOps is based on agile programming method. Therefore, it allows breaking larger code bases into smaller and manageable chunks. As I said earlier, it gives you the opportunity to have your products released in phases here. So rather than you just working, to, working from A to Z and then releasing your products, you can then face the release of your products in, you know, in little or manageable chunks. And that's it. Uh, now, so on this screen here, we have a DevOps um, glossary. Uh, the following are the terms and tools within the overall principle described above that successful DevOps engineers need to know. Now, um, you, you, the one, one important aspect of DevOps is the cloud. And um, the cloud is where all these, um, the pipeline and the pipeline and all your virtual mach virtual machines and all the virtual um, infrastructure infrastructure is kept here. So uh, we have the uh, infrastructure as a service, 
if you work in IT, you would have heard of the public cloud. Uh, if you've heard of the public cloud, then you ha you've heard of the leading cloud vendors such as Amazon Web Services, AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform. These are the infra infrastructure as a service vendors that provide computing resources to customers via a public connection over the internet in a virtualized environment. These resources include storage, bandwidth, virtual servers, load balancers, network connections, and IP addresses. Basically, all everything that you need is in the cloud. All you need to do is just to have a, access details to to those um, to the infrastructure, and then you can you can then begin to use it as. as as a result of that here. So as I said earlier, we have the AWS, Amazon Web Services, the Google Cloud Platform, Azure, IBM, and Digital Oceans. And there are also some other uh, infrastructures as well. We have the software as a, as a service, and we have the um, platform as a service. The software as a service is an example of that is your Facebook, where you have your um, facilities to do emails, facilities to um, um, to do vo um, voice over the internet, um, 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 telephone conferences, and all that. So um, another important aspect of DevOps is Agile uh, and Waterfall. So uh, Waterfall is a methodology that separates the various phases of software development and delivery and executes each phase in a linear manner. So as you can see from, the, um, from this diagram, we have your um, we have all the phases of software development in in a, in, in in a straight in a straight line. Uh, you have to complete one process before you go on to the other. You you do your analysis, planning, your design. You know one after the other. You have to complete one uh, after the other. As a result, code may not be developed until a project is well on its way, and the important phases of testing and quality assurance may be shortened or omitted altogether if there are delays in a previous state in a previous phase. Now uh, if problems are brought to light in testing or quality assurance, the software has to be recorded recorded or go even further back in the development development process. So um, for each of these stages would have to be completed and as a result there might be delays, there might be issues and then you know the other stages would even not even come into place before because you have to complete each of the phases before you move on to the next one. Now, but with Agile, Agile is a methodology that looks at, at business and software development projects in a non-linear way. Uh, that is uh, consequently more efficient. Now, testing is implemented early on and often so that developers can fix problems and make adjustments while they build providing better control and over their projects and reducing a lot of risk associated with the waterfall methodology. Now you can see, sorry, this is, this is not really clear. Now you can see that with the um, what Agile methodology, you have your planning, and then during your planning, before your deployment, you have your design, build, and test. So this goes in a, you know, they go, it goes in a circle, uh, you know, for and then it goes into deployment. And then, so as a result of Agile, you can break your, you can break your um, activities into little, little chunks called iteration or sprints, and then you release your product with the goal to release a product at the end of that particular um, um, cycle or iteration here. Now, <clears throat> as I said earlier, we have um, um, continuous integration. This is where developers, testers integrate code into a shared repository multiple times a day, and each isolated change to the code is tested immediately in order to detect and prevent integration problems. So this is one of the advantages of, um, of DevOps. You know, you are easy, um, um, failures or, or bugs or defects are easily um, uh, detected and then resolved. Now examples of tools that you can use for continuous integration include um, Jenkins, SimCity, uh, Travis CI, and Circle CI. Now, uh, with uh, another aspect of um, integration and delivery is continuous delivery. Uh, it's an extension of continuous integration, and the next step in, uh, the, which is the next step in incremental software delivery. Uh, it's also 
This ensures that every version of the code that is tested in the continuous integration repository can be released at any moment. Now, uh, Jenkins is um, a form of pipeline that you can use for continuous uh, delivery as well. You can also use TeamCity, uh, Electric Cloud, um, Amazon Web Services, and um, code deploy. Now, um, one other aspect of to consider as well is also uh, continuous deployment is an extension of continuous integration aiming to have a new code deployed in production uh, to be used by a user. So as you are integrating your code, yeah, you are doing, you, you can also release them once you are sure that um, um, everything, at all, it's been tested, it's, um, it's been um, deployed on so many other um, um, services, you, you know, it, it meant all the, uh, all the requirements or criteria are specified by the business case. And then uh, you can also deploy, from there you can also deploy and um, it can go into production where users or uh, can make use of the product here. Now, uh, in a nutshell, we have continuous, uh, we have configuration management, uh, which is a process of maintaining up-to-date, detailed record of hardware and software, uh, including versioning requirements, network addresses, and design and operational information. So basically, as you are doing your continuous integration and deployment, as you are building your codes, as you are doing all the activities within DevOps, you need to keep, like, you need to have um, an up-to-date records of these hardware changes, these software changes, and all your versioning um, um, requirements as well. Uh, so that you can, an example of the tools that can be used for that include um, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, and um, all these can be used to aid the process here. Uh, now, another thing that I need, you need to know about uh, DevOps is containers. Uh, I'm sure, I don't know if any one of you have heard of um, Docker. Docker is um, a lightweight virtualization component which helps you to hold your microservices and then um, which runs in isolation and um, basically they are hosted in the cloud and they help you to run all your services or isolated services separately all working together to give you um, to, to give you the application that you are building there. Now this one, they run on their own processes, file system and network stack and and they are all uh, virtualized using the uh, root operating system or running on, running on the hardware. Now uh, Docker is a, is a well known example of container. Um, Kubernetes, Elastic Box and all that are also examples of, of those as well. Now, uh, one other as important aspect of um, DevOps is uh, versioning. Now, versioning uh, includes practices and tools that helps uh, organization maintain and control changes within their source code. So basically, as, you are, as a developer is building the codes um, um, for the application, and the tester is also um, taking these codes, um, writing his or her own automation scripts, and then checking to be sure, uh, checking to ensure that the codes that the tester, uh, the developer, have written are all working correctly. Once once the tests are passed and um, everything is been okayed, you um, push this or into a, a versioning control system, which then um, where you can then um, you, where you, which, which, which maintains your code and all the changes that you may want to make to it in future, yeah. Now, examples of uh, versioning control uh, includes um, GitHub, uh, Bitbucker, and um, uh, Artifactory as well. So Azure DevOps is also an example of um, uh, a version control system as well. Now, uh, for defect maintenance and bug tracking, uh, these are systems that you use to um, uh, track and maintain bugs and defects here. Uh, it helps you to manage your tasks very well, and it also f helps you to um, uh, ensure that configuration management also of your activity, and it also helps you to measure time, efforts, and and all and and and, and, other, and other things and uh, as well. Now, examples of um, bug tracking um, tools include um, Jira, VSTS, Azure DevOps, and um, Bug track and all that. So um, 
one key, one other key aspect of DevOps is automation testing. Now, uh, test automation facilitates um, uh, work by supporting multiple tests that can run continuously. Uh, it helps tests. It helps, uh, it enhances test coverage while supporting efficient uh, release cycle. So basically, um, uh, what um, you would have, what, what, well, basically test automation just makes um, life easy uh, in a nutshell. Uh, ta lots of codes, lots of um, things can be done with test automation rather than uh, manual testing. And um, it, it, it for example, test automation tools helps manage, execute, and measure functional tests and load tests. So um, examples of these tools could include um, Selenium, Cucumber, JUnit, TestNG, JMeter, and Specflow. One other thing that I need to mention about test automation also is about um, you can also carry out non-functional testing such as um, performance testing, um, uh, looking at the performance of the application you are building, uh, looking at the stress, um, the co um, carrying out stress tests, um, scalability tests, and um, also security tests, and also access, um, accessibility tests for people that have um, either impairments, um, they, they are blind, you know, they are deaf, you know. These are the kind of things that you can also use test automation for. Uh, unit testing, is, which is usually done by the uh, developers, is a process that allows testers to examine small parts of an application, uh, such as a specific code or model. Uh, these are these these are also part of DevOps, and um, they are usually done by uh, developers. Now, monitoring is a primary element of IT performance management, and is one of the most important aspects when operating online services. Monitoring tools are essential and provide crucial information that helps to ensure services robustness in terms of availability and security. So um, basically, this, in a nutshell, this is just all about um, DevOps. Uh, and we will now quickly move on to uh, VS, Azure DevOps here, which was from VS, yes. Uh, bear with me. Now, um, what we what we are what we will be looking at tonight is um, how to create a test plan, uh, how to create test cases within test plan, uh, how to add manual test scripts to the plan, uh, how to execute the test cases, and how to create box for field test cases, and also viewing the test case reports. Uh, this is. Um, Sharing on my screen now is um, Azure DevOps, and basically uh, this is um, this is the landing page where you have your project here. Now you can create a project uh, by simply uh, clicking on this button, and then giving uh, the project name and the description of what you want to call your project. Yeah. Now um, I've already created a project. Um, which I've used previously, and I'll be using that tonight as well. Now, uh, if I go into my projects, which I called Selenium Specflow Training, uh, to the left side I have my dashboard, and um, I have, and um, on the main screen I have my uh, uh, my boards and widgets and all that here. Yeah. This, this, these are customizable. You can move this as you want and all that. Now, when you click on your dashboard, uh, it gives you an overview of what your project has. From there, you can manage your work. You can collaborate on code. As I said earlier, collaboration uh, Git is a form of versioning. You can add code to your repository. Uh, you can continuously integrate, and you can also visualize um, visualize your progress. And now, from there, you can open Visual Studio, which is your IDE, or you know where you in build your um, automation um, scripts. Yeah. Now, to to do a, um, to to create a test plan, a test um, plan, uh, you come to your board. Here and then the, you see in, this is so th basically this is my board here. 
with different backlog items. So basically, backlog items are uh, maybe you can call them epics or stories which you intend to do within your uh, designing or software development process here. Now, uh, <clears throat> for instance, um, I could create a backlog item to say, uh, let me call it um, create registration uh, page. Now, so this is a backlog item. Now, within this backlog item, I could then say, uh, <clears throat> I can add a test case to say uh, registration here. Now, if I click on that registration, yeah, I could add test. So basically, what I'm doing now is creating a test case. So I've created a set, I've created the backlog item, then I've created a plan here, yeah. and then within the plan I'm adding a test case to it here. Yeah. Now, so um, as I said to you, um, agile agile involves you creating um, having iterations of um, work activities to create your um, application here. Yeah. So now, <clears throat> within my test case. Just as did you showed you last week um, on the Excel sheet, um, it could mean uh, it, you have to put your steps to create the to create the test case. So it could mean navigate or go to. If I navigate, um, navigate to let's say giftrate.com, yeah. Now when I click on um, when I click on uh, registration link, uh, I should be on the registration page. Yeah, and then here, whatever you expect to um, um, to come up on the on the pages, so is what you put here. So you should expect that the registration page should be displayed. Or you can just say registration page is displayed here. Yeah, that is the expected result. All right. And basically you save and close. Now depending on the priority that you want to give to your um uh, depending on estimation of or you well um, estimation of how, how how long this activity will take to um, test or design um, this this page, you give you a priority and all that. So and then you can then close here, close it. So within this backlog item, I have created a test case, and my test case is called registration here. Now one thing I can do about this test case is um, I can run this test case. If I click run, yeah, it basically opens up a window. Now, running this test case, it means when I go to, when I navigate to giftrate.com on my browser, for instance, uh, let me, if I open this page here, I'm just using this as, um, uh, as a demonstration. I'm not actually following what is on this page here. So let's say, for instance, you you navigate to that website, yeah. Once the website opens, you tick it, you tick it, you tick this box, you tick this um, circle to say test pass. When I click on registration, if the registration page is open as expected, you tick on it. And um, oh, sorry, I, I, I've duplicated this. Here. So when I click, sorry, it should be click on registration page, yeah. When the register, when you click on, when if you can see the link. You, you take this, and then when the uh, page is displayed, you take this, yeah, and then, you, and then you save. So, for instance, if you went to that page and you could not find this registration page, you tick the X box. You tick this one. That means the, that particular step has failed. And then you could put your comment says uh, registration, registration page. Uh, not 
showing or not coming up and then you and then you create a bug here and then you click create, um, save um, to create a bug just bear with me uh, I don't know why this is yep that's fine so uh, basically when you create when you click that to create your bug uh, let's say uh, failed we can call this the title of this bug a field registration uh, page so uh, fill, uh, okay, let's say uh, registration page failed to open that's the title of the bug uh, and it's a new defect that is being reported you can tag it to maybe your team if your team is um, a white team you can tag it. Uh, you can also tag it to maybe you are writing it in C sharp or, or whatever. You can tag it there, and you know you can tag it to maybe it is release one of your projects, release one and all that. So you can you can tag it. Depend. You can even tag it to your name if you want or anything, depending on what the tagging on 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 the naming naming convention of the place where you are working. All right. So from this now you can see that I have just created a bug. And then it has, on from the bug that that has been created, I can see that it's filled on this step, where the uh, registration page should be displayed. So the expected result was, uh, registration page uh, should be displayed. But my comment is um, the page is not showing. I cannot find the page. So basically, this is a bug that you've cre um, you've um, just created, and then you can save this bug here by closing by clicking close and save. Now before I do that, yeah, one thing I can quickly um, say again is um, you can link this to an existing item. So let's say um, I want to link this to a, another story or another work item. I can click link. Yeah. So it's a successor of... Um, so alright, so before you go into an application you have to register. Yeah. Now so a successor is before. No. Um, uh, sorry, a successor is after. So I can say, let's say for instance, um, I can change this to a predecessor. So I can say this is a predecessor of a login item because I have to register first before I log in. So I can say it's a predecessor of login item. So I'm linking one, this bug, to a subsequent item. Yeah? So you can either click on the log um, ID or you just click on the item so I uh, oh sorry I've, du I've duplicated it twice so I'm linking the this bug to login page and then I can put um, um, could not just a comment could not register due to the registration page uh, not loading or whatever you can put anything there you know just a brief description of what the issue is and then you click OK and that and then you save uh, field cannot be empty just build uh, field just what field is this Oh, sorry, uh, field registration page. Right, that's it. So, build me. Yeah, that's it. So I have created that bug, and then I can close it down. So you see on the on your back on your backlog um, board that the bug has been created for um, this test plan. Yeah. Now, before um, quick, quickly, um, I've shown you two things um, in one go. I've shown you how to create a test case, and I've also linked, tried to run the test case, and then raise the bug for that failure. So another thing I can do quickly show you is. Um, here, if I click on test plans, I have all my test plans 
and all the associated test cases which I have um, um, run against them. So, for instance, uh, this is um, this is the one I just ran now, the registration page, um, the registration um, test case. So, for instance, if I was to come here, if if the bug has been rectified and um, and the defect has been fixed, I could come here and then rerun this again. So, if I could, if I wanted to rerun the test, all I needed to do was come to the test plan, uh, look at um, click the test plan, look at the test plans um, that I've created, look at the associated test cases within them by just clicking. So when you click on any of these test plans, you see the associated test cases that are linked to them. So um, I could just click on this one uh, and then we run it. So by rerunning it, all I needed to do was to click on run and run test again here. So the page, this same um, test cases comes up and then as you go through the pages you can then click on them as if they display the expected results and then close. So by the time I've closed, by the time you do that then it will now change from failure to a pass. And then one other thing that you can do is um, you can also run a, um, a test um, report by clicking on runs. You come here, you click on run and then it will show you all the tests that you probably ran um, by going through the steps I've shown you. And then what you can do, the, another thing that you can also do is to come back here, right click on your each of those test cases which you have actually gone through or, 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 or ran. You right click on them to view the test case report here. So when you right click and view the test case report, it will tell you, um, it's give you the details of the test passed, the duration and, and the steps that are passed and if you have any attachments or anything, you could just add attachments um, to it by clicking on this one, browse and add attachments and OK and, all, and do all that here. Um, one other thing to show you is your this is your this is your board this is your uh, this is the backlog items so as I said to you um, agile involves small and short iterations here now in your backlog your backlog is the list of things that you intend to do you now pick them based on the priority of how you want to um, uh, based on priority so most most times the product owner would say would pick items from the backlog and put it within a screen and say oh based on priority based on what the business wants this is what we need to develop first now so I've just created it, um, all these backlogs as a dummy backlog and then um, you can then um, the product owner can then you can then put them within screen um, sprints uh, and then take them one after the other. So for Sprint 1, these are the items, there are 8 items put within Sprint 1 which can be, which can go into um, um, into development and um, and as you move on, as you finish, as you as you move on from one um, uh, from one, uh, from, as, you, as you progress with your um, as you progress with your um, with your development and testing activities, you can then move these items from one part of your board to the other, you know, and until and when you are finished with them, you can leave them, you can put them in done and all that. So basically, this is just um, this is just a brief overview of how to create a test case a test plan, run your test manually using Azure DevOps and also um, view the test results and all that. Uh, we have 10 more minutes before we finish this. Um, does anybody have any question, please? Okay, all right, so please can you make your PowerPoint slide a bit larger? All right, so, uh, it seems to fast. Could this be my network? I can't see anything. All right, I'm going to show you my PowerPoint again. Sorry about that. I wasn't looking at your um, your. So 
this is my PowerPoint and I'm sure the video will be available for you to go through again um, very soon. So this is the PowerPoint. I think you are going too fast. Sorry about that. We needed to cover a lot. Sorry about that. Um, the this the PowerPoint will be available for you to go through, and um, you can then um, you know have take time to read it and um, do more research on that. Yeah. Um, uh, I I have a question. Yeah, go on, please. Yeah, sorry. How do I download the dev app? All right, so it's just that you, all you need to do is to go to um uh to the internet, yeah. Okay. And then what you need to do is to go to Microsoft.com. Uh, so via uh, Azure DevOps. So Google Azure DevOps and um. You go to uh, yeah. So Microsoft Azure dot Microsoft dot com yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes. And then all you need to do is to register. So because I've signed in already, that's why you can see my name here. So all you need to do is to register, put in your name, and then just go through the registration details, and then it will take you to the to the landing page, which is um, this one. But when you, by the time you by the time you open it and create a profile for yourself, you wouldn't have any um, any projects coming up here. And uh, before one one thing I need to show you quickly is um, you can also add people to be part of your organization. Uh, you can add users. So if you have friends that you want to play, you want to play around with um, things, you can you know add users. You know. You can add a user, you can give them access levels and all that, stakeholder, blah, blah, blah. And um, and you can also, you know, but by the time you add them, you can assign tasks to them. You can assign um, test cases to them to run. You know, you can move things around and all that. You know, so uh, that is, it is, it is a, a web-based application that you can, and, and it's free to use here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. Yep. Does anyone else have any other um, question, please? Yeah. Thanks, DG. Yeah. Azo is um, it's free. Yeah. All right. So DG is saying that you would have the opportunity to um, lay your hands on Azo. During the three month internship. Yeah. So, hello. Um, hello. Yeah. Hi. All right. Please. I have a question, uh, or I, I'd like to make a request. How do we get uh, the PowerPoint slides? Well, the, uh, well, that that will be available um, with DG. With DG. I, I'm sure it's going to. Um, I don't know. We will probably post it on the um, website at the end of the uh, meeting. Yeah. Or maybe to whenever the video is available as well. And and uh, the name I don't know maybe I missed it. The name DevOps. What does it actually mean? Development and operations. So it's it's an acronym here, yeah? coined from development. So if you look at my um, if you look at my PowerPoint, can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Uh, all right, so. Okay. Tell me. So it's um. Bell me, please. So it's uh, hold on. So DevOps, it's a co it's a collaboration between development and operations. So this it's it's development and operations coming together to work together, you know, to do to build applications and. You know, make things uh, make big products better, basically. Okay. Yeah. Then um, Docker. Yeah. Without um, Docker in as part of your tools, can you still perform or work in a um, DevOps environment? You know, yes. Tools, yeah? Yes. Yes. So without Docker, you can work in a, um Basically, you can you can do test automation without running Docker. Docker is just a, a it's just a container that holds your microservices. So rather than 
rather than rather than run your microservices through the containers here, yeah, you can also run them through your IDE. Yeah. So basically, for a tester, most basically for a tester, it is not mandatory that you run your microservices on Docker. You can run them through. You can kickstart your microservices from your IDE on its own. Hmm. I, I've always thought microservices uh, means uh, building things in like um, smaller, smaller bits. You know. No, uh, no, no, no. Microservices. No, so so uh, all right. So for instance, if you have if you have a database here, you, or you you're building an application, you have the front end. The front end will have its own microservice. The back end will have its own microservice. Your database will have its own microservices. So all these things are small chunks of your database working in isolation, but helping you to you know power to, you know that you know to power up your application. So they are doing that little bit in different in, in isolation to help you build the application. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Very clear. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we have about four minutes more to go. Um, any more questions? All right. I don't know. Um, yeah, DG. I don't know if you. Have anything to say? Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, when are uh, these uh, lessons going to be ready in group the group chat? Because uh, the last one that we did last week, uh, I couldn't uh, listen to all the lessons, and I'm still waiting on the uh, proper one to send to the group chat. When is it going to be ready? When is it going to be available in the group chat for us to like rewatch and to get it because we that we have kids and we couldn't focus on that lesson at that 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 same day. Okay, I, th I think the question is for me, right? So yeah. yeah. So uh, I've replied on the Telegram group, right? That uh, if you if you bear with me, right? So we are a small team. Uh, we do also work, and the thing where you are family, you are family too. So. Uh, I will, like I said last time also, I will try to post it before the next um, meeting. So okay. uh, just bear with me. So as things progresses, so we're going to get more people to be doing that for us. So yeah, if you also want to help, so we we see we need we need more people to help us in different areas. So that's okay. where yeah, we need all the answer we can get. So okay, anyway. sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Right. Okay. Hello, DJ. Yeah. I don't know if anyone has any more questions. All right. So, if there's no more question, I think we we meet on Thursday for the um, last part of the um, manual testing, which is interesting. To, yeah. So then, from next week, from upper week, we start the automation. Uh, I don't, I don't appreciate Edward. Maybe you are not listening to what I just said. Okay. All right. We'll, so, if there's no other question. We'll, we will just we'll call it a day. Thank you so much. So we we'll see you next week. So um, yeah, we we'll see. Uh, oh, there will be final parts. Yeah, for the training on for the mana tra training on Thursday. So then there will be another one for the practical part next week. So and then we we'll start the automation on. And puzzle, or next puzzle, or possible puzzle. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.